Rich, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Just want to let you know I got promoted since our last chat. Um, so good, a man that's done some work. There are higher levels to achieve to attain. Um, so the three things I want to talk about is okay. I got the book you recommended, the nice, uh, no more Mister Nice Guy. Okay. And here's the thing: when I was reading that book, I started to realize I don't suffer from the nice guy syndrome. Okay. Um, but I still have an issue with, I think I'm good at maintaining my frame, but then allowing the women to enter it is where I kind of reach an impasse. There's something about that where, where are you screwing up? Exactly. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I get, you know, past the first date, certain things I would do in my 20s. I'm just not going to do that shit anymore. Okay. You know, it's part of my French. Okay. So, what's your question for me here, bud? Well, how do you maintain your frame, but then uh, make it inviting so that women actually choose to enter it? So. Uh... It's, it's gotta be something that it's gotta be attractive to her. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the things that I get from, uh, guys that are like, Hey, you know, I'm, um, uh, 40, whatever. I don't want to date women my age. I like hotter, younger women. How do I date hotter, younger women? And it's like, okay, well, you got to invite her into your world, right? You can't put on the Justin Bieber outfit and the, you know, like the clothes that match her generation. You have to invite her into your world. You have to give her something to get excited about joining into. And that's kind of what, you know, um, having her enter your frame means is you have to ha- like have something there for her to to get excited about. I mean, um, uh, whenever I date women, you know, like if they come over to my house and they see the decor in the room and they're like, oh, that's a nice couch. It's a restoration hardware, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. they know that couch cost me close to $8,000, right? They see the car in the garage. Oh, it's $300,000 McLaren. Cool, right? So it's inviting. Right. So when I have to set a boundary or if I have to put my foot down, for example, I'm like, hey, you know, this is a non-negotiable. Just do it sort of thing if they're pushing back. Um, It's easier when you've done it a few times. It's easier when you've got something that's of interest to them. It's easier, you know, for them to enter your frame when you have a frame that's basically worth entering. You know, if you know what I'm saying. Well, maybe I just don't have much to offer because like I I do a lot of fun, exciting things and I'm pretty fit and, you know, but I don't. So so when we talk about entering a man's frame, it's it's usually because, you know, in a relationship, there's a little bit of a balance and it's like, you know, are you going to enter her frame or is she going to enter your frame? And when you enter your her frame, it's because. She's like, hey, turtle, you know, I want to go to the Wolfstock event this weekend with my fluff, fluffy white dog with a sweater on it. And I want you to come and I want you to hold my handbag and drive me there. And we're going to walk around. We're going to sit around with my friends for three hours doing everything that I want. Like that's entering her frame and doing what she wants. Right. It's because you don't have anything to offer beyond that. So you need to have something better than what it is that she's trying to offer you. Because women really truthfully don't like it when a guy enters her frame. They they hate, um, you know, like little puppy dogs that follow them around and do and and say everything that they tell them to. It's like, you know, she says jump and you're like, well, how high do you want me to jump sort of thing? Um, they really don't want that. So you have to give her something to want to enter your frame on. You know, she's going to want to follow the boundaries that you set. So why? So my question to you now is why do you think that she's not doing that? Like, what are you missing? Um. I would probably, to be honest, probably game. Okay. It's probably work on my game, you know, like the- How old are you again, Turtle? 31. Okay. And I can't recall what we talked about last time for the life of me. So can you give me a little bit of frame around what it was that brought getting, me? It was uh, getting a better job. Getting a better job. Okay. So you got the promotion. Yeah. What was the pay increase worth percentage wise? You know what? It wasn't uh, much at all, but it was in a role that- I feel more suited to. And did you get a pay rise or no? Yeah, I did. 
Yeah. And what was the percentage? It wasn't much. Not much. Maybe like a few hundred bucks. But so percent so per, percentage wise, like what are you saying? Like less than two percent per paycheck? Like ten percent. Ten percent. Okay. All right. Well, ten percent is not too bad. Okay. But okay, what I think it is, it's really hard for me to say this, but it might just be. I'm convinced that it might just be pure SMB because I don't see myself as a beta. I identify with the alpha. Okay. And so what Can I we find get you to switch on your camera or is it too dark where you're at or like, what are we missing? I want to take a look at you, bud. Okay. Well, you're not a bad looking guy. Well, you see, my thing is this. Okay. The professional women, you can date professional women. Right. Um, but they're probably going to be lower SMB. Looks Being, wise is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of where I struggle because there is a balancing act of, you know, the more professional she is, the more she's going to demand. And also, not in addition to that, sorry, my glasses are really jacked up, but in addition to that, I don't want to date too low on the socioeconomic spectrum because I just I don't find much there. Like someone said earlier. Yeah, you're not attracted to that. What's that? So what you're saying is that you're not attracted to her when she's below you like that. Well, yeah, because it's hard to I find it hard to connect with them with someone who is not as, you know, intelligent and what do you do for a living again i do business development okay and where do you live like what what part of the world roughly chicago illinois and your take-home pay last year was how much under last year was under sixty thousand. yeah so i mean like you can't punch up too high like you're not going to date a, a lawyer you might get yourself a paralegal i mean she might date you, but the paralegal is going to be looking to date a lawyer, right? Like I was talking to Andrew before we went live, I think, and he's like, yeah, I date a lot of paralegals. Well, it's easy for him because he's a lawyer, right? And she's a paralegal, so she's going to look up to him. It's like a security guard knows that he's not a cop. Like a police officer knows that he's better than a security guard. A security guard know, knows that he's further down the social economic scale. You're going to have a hard time dating you know, professional women making under $60,000 a year because professional women like we're talking about in this cast earlier, like lawyers, doctors, uh, medical professionals, accountants, like in that sphere of things, they're making over six figures. And because women are hypergamous, they don't want to date down with men. They want to date up. They want to be with a guy that they can look up to that they see as a giant. So they're looking for, you know, Kevin, the VP of sales or Steve, the VP of accounting, right? Or the CFO of the new tech startup sort of thing. Like that's what they're looking for. That's what their expectations are anyway, right? And on top of that, you got to be six feet tall and six pack, six pack abs and six months out of a relationship and a 600 horsepower car. And da, 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 da. They have 231, you know, checklists. And they just finished reading Why Men Love Bitches. So they're a little bit disagreeable too sometimes. So, right? Like I, I wouldn't put that much focus on chasing women, which is really, you know, what I essentially, you know, concluded at the end of my book who conveniently, you know, also Aaron Cleary, you know, concluded at the end of his book, you know, the book of numbers, the ROI on uh, chasing women is the ROI is on yourself. Don't worry about getting duck girls. Duck girls will come when you're worthy of duck girls, you know, sort of thing. Um, you know, the next step for you is okay. Making 60 grand last year, got a 10% pay raise. Let's see if we can get that number up to six figures, hundred grand, right? I don't know. Is there a side hustle that you can, you know, slap together you don't have any kids that you're taking care of you don't have a wife or an ex-wife or anything like that right right so it's getting on the grind i mean you're a good looking guy you got some style you got a decent haircut you know the beard looks nice and clean and trim the glasses you know fine you know you've yeah. got like the optics okay but i've said this before you know women have a lot of patience for a young chad like a 21 year old chad with a plan they'll be all over him like a fat kid on cake Lots of women. It's true. Yeah, okay. Awesome. But if you're a 41, a 45 year old Chad, and you don't have anything to show for yourself, but you might have a plan, they don't have a lot of patience for that guy. Right. And you're somewhere between that 21 year old and the 40 something year old. Only you probably want to get closer to 100 grand by this time. Right. All right. 
And I'm not saying that so you can get the girls. Like I'm saying that so that you, as a man, can be spoiled for choice. You can be the sexual exactly. selector. You can say, you know what, Rachel, I don't like you. I don't <laughs> like your attitude. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. All right? Because Becky's coming over later on tonight. And she doesn't and give me that crap. You know what? What you said is 100% true. Because when I was in my 20s, I was able to do, I was able to pull that off. Right. Where just as you said, they're willing to overlook, you know, uh, your height, your profession or whatever, because I don't know why, but they just willing to overlook. But in my thirties, it's like, they, you gotta be pristine. So men, men must become, you must like men are made. Okay. Like we have to make something out of ourselves. We can't rest on our laurels. Um, because hey, you know, I like the um, the guy earlier that that was a teacher. Like you heard him, right? Yeah, yeah. So if he was like a Chad teacher, he'd have women, no no problem. But he's an overweight teacher, right? So like you know, like have have something going on here. Have as much going on as you possibly can. It looks, money, status, game, right? Like those are the main things. If you're insignificant, become significant. If you're fat, lose the weight, you know, build some muscle, broad shoulders, narrow waist. If you don't make enough money, make some bank, right? You don't have any game because you're awkward and you're anxious all the time. Learn game, right? Practice it. Make some cold approaches. Buy a course, you know, read on how that works. 